Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is going to be The Refuge Terror from the Deep. Plays one to six players, takes about, say, an hour to an hour and a half, depending on the number of players, and it's for ages uh, 13 and up. In the game The Refuge Terror from the Deep, you're basically underwater divers and you're dealing with a Kraken. Yes, the dreaded Kraken. You're either playing competitive mode or cooperative mode. It's up to you how you want to play it, but regardless, you have to deal with him. If you're playing competitive you're trying to get around him and an escape into an escape pod and if you're playing cooperative it's likely you're trying to defeat him now it depends though on the different objectives in cooperative mode but you're going to go through certain phases in which you're trying to accomplish certain goals and missions and then a competitive is more of like messing with your opponents moving across dodging these tentacles and avoiding the devouring head of the kraken that moves around the board the game is a tense underwater terror style game let's go ahead and show you down below what it looks like then add to play and then what I think about the game. So here we have the game The Refuge, Terror from the Deep, and everything included. And as you can see, there's quite a bit. You're going to have this board here, and it's going to be front and back. This is the cooperative side, and the other side is the competitive side, which has some different changes in the game, depending on what you want to play. There is the big Kraken head here, and it is trying to devour the peoples, and you put it right in the middle here, as well as tentacles. You're going to put tentacles on the board based on the spawn space of the top row here. If you're playing a three or greater game, you're going to put an extra tentacle right here to symbolize the threat track already having one tentacle with three remaining to be placed. Each player is going to get a character and you place it on the starting spaces on the board at the very bottom of this specific row here. Each player will also get three character cards that symbolize character abilities along with different characters here like Sophie Saint Laurent and Satoshi Takahashi, an interesting name indeed. As well as for the cooperative variant you're going to be choosing a one, a two, and a three objective card Hard. You can do them randomized basically and they have different difficulty levels from blue being easy to then the yellowish color being medium and then red being hard depending on how difficult you want the game to be. Take out the grabber cards and whatever else it tells you to take out as well as the competitive dive cards and use the cooperative turn references. They'll come with competitive turn references as well, a refuge deck, the box, both rule books for both types of game modes and additional different tentacles and characters to choose from in the game. The final Final things it's going to come with is the abyss mode deck and the basic kraken deck and you could play with either of those if you would so choose and that is basically what is included so let's go ahead and take it down below i will show you how to play a basic turn how the kraken functions and what you need to do in a co cooperative variant of the game and then if you want to check out competitive i'll be doing a live stream which i'll have talking about very very shortly all right let's go down below so i went ahead and set up the refuge terror from the deep for three players as you can see we're going to be playing with this character over here, which is called Sophie St. Laurent, this character over here called Sakatoshi, Satoshi uh, Takahashi, and then this character here, which is called Margaret Haig. And each of them are going to have face-up cards to start the game off with. They're actions that you can go ahead and utilize. They're very, very useful. Uh, they're also going to start with a competitive or a cooperative turn reference, because we're playing the cooperative mode. This, this, this tile here, or the space here, is going to have a tentacle to simplify that there's at least three players in the game. The deck of refuge cards or salvage cards is shuffled, and we have all of our objective placed out, as well as the kraken head and the four tentacles in the spawn spaces provided here. Uh, we're going to be playing with the normal deck, not the Abyss mode, but if you wanted to, you could play with this deck if you want a little bit more of a challenge. So we'll use this deck over here. Let's talk about some of the spaces for first before we get involved in how turns work as well as our objectives over here. Spawn spaces will let you destroy the tentacles uh, in a horizontal or vertical row uh, pr um, from the space. You have these little spaces here, which are whirlpools, which you move yourself with another character on a space that has a uh, rock formation. These spaces here are safe from the tentacles. They cannot hurt you here. And these spaces here actually let you move tentacles uh, on the grid, which you can kind of put them in the spaces that you want them to be in. The start spaces are over here, in which you start the game off with. And whenever tentacles get there, they'll move over here. These spaces back here are basically the uh, the safety area, the safe space, or the finish line. Most of you guys who played the original Refuge know what the space is for. But there's a lot of twists now involved in the game with that. These are the Kraken spaces, and when you 
move onto the spaces, the Kraken will move closer to you. So you got to be careful because it will try and push you off the board and whatnot. And every player is positioned correctly. So those are the spaces of the game and how the board is set up. Over here is going to be one of the objectives with the number one. It's an easy objective and it says wound the Kraken, which means you need to eliminate four or more tentacles in a single player turn. And if you can do that, you'll flip this card over and gain whatever benefits it has. Finally, you'll need to go oh, next you'll need to go over here, which is establish a supply depot. And it says that you need to be in this specific row based on the boat here, and it has little arrows. And you have to discard these cards. And the cards are all going to have a symbol on them, like those are flippers here. Uh, let's see if I can find something that more correlates. There's a lock symbol. So you have to discard one of these type of cards and two of these and two of the harpoon type of cards when you're on this specific space. And if you do that, you'll flip that card over and complete that objective. Uh, the next objective after that is going to be to defeat the Kraken, which you'll need to actually get up close and personal with the Kraken, discard combinations of cards and do damage to it. And if you can get it to five damage, it will be defeated and you guys will cooperatively win the game. And that's basically the idea of how, how the objectives work. And if you can complete the last one, you win. If you lose the game, it's going to be because either this threat tracker filled up or every single player fell over and or was eaten or defeated on a singular turn. And finally, if the salvage deck runs out, that's how you're going to lose the game. But there might be other objectives and whatnot that could change that. Uh, to begin the game, you'll simply choose a player to go and they'll get two actions to start. The first action could be to move a space and then activate the space that you move into. The second thing you could do is play a salvage card. So if you have one of these cards, you can simply play it and do what it says. Or you could use a character action. These characters have action cards on them. To use them, you simply flip them over, and that means that you've utilized their action. They do different things. Sometimes they will eliminate the, the tentacles in certain areas, or let you move certain ways. They have all their own unique type of things. Like this guy, gal here, she can actually place down camera tokens, and if she does that, when a Kraken moves onto that space, she'll allow her to take an extra action, which is very, very useful. You could also discard two salvage cards that share the same exact symbol type, to recover a character or pick yourself up. So basically what that means is if your a tentacle hits you, uh, you're gonna get knocked over. If you get devoured and moved onto the board, you'll be flipped over. And the only way to come back to revive yourself is to discard two cards of the same type. Uh, and if you can do that, you'll get to come back, make sure basically come back into the game, which is very important. After you've taken two of those actions of your choice, then the Kraken is going to do his thing. And basically what that means is you're going to draw one of these Kraken cards and you're going to follow what the card says. The first top of the card states that you're going to move a cra the Kraken in a certain way or he's going to try and devour people around him. And this says move twice to the right, one and two. Then you're going to spawn or move tentacles based on these specific to, uh, icons in the specific rows and or columns that it says. So for instance, this one says to move two spaces, all tentacles in this area here going down. This one here in the middle here says you're going to spawn a tentacle on a spawn space. And they're going to be these spawn spaces here. If they ever get filled up, they'll go to the start space. And if ever a tentacle gets on the start space, it will go onto the threat tracker. And that's how you will lose the game that way. And then finally over here, it'll make you move twice. And so that, or make it move, all the tentacles move twice. And basically that's how it's going to happen. This will get put here, and then there'll be the next player's turn. And that player will take his or her two actions. And then another tentacle card, another Kraken card will get drawn. The, to the Kraken will then move. He will then spawn and move more tentacles around. And the game will continue like so such. As you go throughout the game, you're trying to basically do these objectives in order. You have to select one and then two and then three. And when you defeat them or do whatever it says they need to be done, they'll do uh, give you a reward, such as recover all character abilities. And recovering is simply if you've utilized all your character abilities, you can then flip them back over, which is very useful. And then return up to two tentacles from the threat track to the supply. So if there are two uh, tentacles here, you can then return them back to the supply, which is a very useful thing. And you'd move on to the next objective and continue the game as such. And that's the basic idea of the game. You're working together cooperatively completing all these objectives and if you can do so before the threat tracker fills up before all your characters fall over or get devoured or before this deck runs out you'll win the game for the refuge terror of the deep an interesting little game will come up now and i'll talk about the refuge cards as well as some of the special character abilities and then how we're going to talk about playing the competitive mode and how you can see that live on our facebook page 
on Wednesday. So let's go ahead and talk about a couple caveats first before we get into what I think about the game. And the first thing is being devoured. If you get a Kraken card that says you get devoured, you're simply going to check to see if you are adjacent or anybody else is adjacent to the Kraken. And if that is the case, then they, in fact the Kraken is going to eat you. And if that happens, you're going to put your character uh, basically on its side in the maw on the side of the board. On your next turn, you'll be able to bring yourself back on the well, laying down onto that specific tile section, and hopefully you can revive yourself or in, co in the co cooperative mode you can have somebody else revive yourself by discarding two cards of the same type otherwise i think you pretty much get a good idea of how the competitive mode and or the cooperative mode is played additionally like i said if you go on to the specific spaces where the kraken is it's going to move to closer towards you and uh, that can basically push you off of the board these are some of the cards in the game there's quite a few of them such as the decryptor it says it uses to unlock an escape pod and or mysterious lockbox so if you have a mysterious lockbox and uh, it says it's as an Action, you can discard a decryptor card from your hand to draw four salvage cards. It's very, very, very useful because salvage cards are how you win this game. Uh, there's also adrenaline, like a little blast in the past from the original, uh, the original, the refuge. This one here says if you immediately, if you, if you use a harpoon gun, you can immediately play this as an additional action and does not cost an action. Cards that cost actions will say they cost actions. Cards that don't are either passives or they are free to play. Uh, let's look at another one. Spear gun. Eliminate a tentacle in your space without taking an action. It's very, very useful. Propulsion device lets you skip over a space and move a little farther. And so on and so forth. There's grappling hooks, mysterious lockboxes, all that, all that good stuff. Uh, in the competitive mode, it plays a little differently as to how you're going to be utilizing your character cards and abilities. But in the basic um, cooperative mode, on uh, the bottom of each of these, these little uh, harpoon gun cards it'll say in the cooperative mode you can eliminate a tentacle that moves onto your space without taking an action so basically it's a way to save yourself from being hit by a tentacle because if you get hit by a tentacle you get knocked down so utilizing these cards instantly is going to be a lifesaver and it's only used that way in the cooperative mode there will also be certain cards that you can do that for as well otherwise you're simply going to use them as an action all right i think you got an idea so what do i think about this game well first of all it does have a feel of the original refuge uh, the competitive mode is very similar in certain ways, but has a different take on how the enemies move, how the Kraken is going to move, and what you need to do in order to escape. There's slight similarities, so people that are fans of that game are going to like this one as well, but this one has a more complex feel with a lot more added content in my opinion. So I, I like that aspect of the competitive mode. Personally, though, I prefer the cooperative mode. It has a lot going for it as far as the objectives you have to go through, and you have to go through them in steps and work together. It doesn't have as much alpha gaming, but it, it still can. Uh, and you're basically trying to do certain things throughout the, the game, which you think would be very, very, very hard to do. You're like, oh, in a single turn, I have to do this? That doesn't seem possible. But as you collectively get cards and trade them with each other because there's also a trade action uh, and basically utilize them to defeat four tentacles in a single turn or get all seven tentacles into our characters in a row or discard cards that are when you're next to the Kraken, you'll start to see that it's possible to do it. And it's fun because you realize that you started with nothing and you've kind of progressed this way to this character that is now able to do all these certain things that you normally didn't think you could. The characters all play very differently as well. One focuses like the, the camera gal, she focuses on getting extra actions and whatnot. The, one of the characters is a very aggressive character that can shoot long distances or do decimating damages all the way across the row and or column. The Kraken is going to move in certain ways and behave in ways that you're going to kind of be able to pre predict and you can kind of assume like, okay, as long as he goes this way, you'll, you'll be like making plans with your allies like, okay, we got to do this and this because we think the Kraken is likely going to either be forced to move this way or stay where he is. And if he spawns here, this is going to help us for this specific objective. So there's a lot of pre-planning. There's a little bit of luck as to what cards are drawn into uh, from this little salvage deck. But for the most part, in fact, almost all of it, except for how the Kraken moves and the cards you draw, you're simply going to be deciding how you want to move, where you want to move, and what spaces are going to interact with what, and what action cards you want to interact with what. And it's going to go in a clockwise faction. So regardless of the number of players, whether you're playing a singular player game for those single player people out there or you're playing all the way up to six it's still going to work just fine uh, because the kraken will take turns in between each of you guys's turns doing certain things that may or may not be beneficial um overall it's a solid solid game the quality of the components is excellent the artwork is excellent this game is a step up uh completely from the amount of uh 
of the components quality in the original refuge these zombies in that one were kind of more like generic zombies these tentacles here just on the prototype alone are very very well detailed very nice thick plastic even this kraken head is really really well done and if it, they if they just replicate this exactly as is i will be more than satisfied with the quality of these miniatures in the game otherwise like i said there's some prototypey components and the board and whatnot so it, it will likely get improved throughout throughout its kickstarter run right as long as as well as some stretch goalie kind of stuff i really like this the cooperative variant of this game i really really enjoyed it uh, the competitive mode is good as well as long as you like a little bit of uh, aggressive take that combat back and forth moving around the board and trying to dodge this trying to dodge other players and the tentacles and having to deal with all these situations that you'd probably rather not deal with if you like this type of game it's something i would definitely suggest taking a look at and if you want to take a better look at the competitive mode which i didn't explain very much of you can watch this wednesday's live stream where we'll be streaming the game the refuge playing competitively and giving away the original refuge game so we'll be playing this one the terror from the deep and we'll give away the race for survival one on the stream for those of you who want to participate and see more about this as well as potentially win a game so overall a solid little game this is this is definitely, um, in my opinion, uh, more favorable than the original one in pretty much every way as far as the, the game goes, the mechanics go, the flow of it, and the added co cooperative mode. They went above and beyond with this one, and I'm very, very happy to say B&B Games, excellent job on the Refuge Terror from the Deep. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Refuge Terror from the Deep, a scary underwater game. I love these type of themes. I love games that are underwater terror. There's not enough of them yet, and I'm very happy they're creating more of them. As well as taking a look at the game, uh, the site, unfilteredgamer.com. Not, not the game, the site and the game at the description down below. If you want to check out the game, in the description down below. But otherwise, check out the site on FilterGamer.com. It's a blog post, giveaways, kicks our list, and more. As well as our live stream, which we'll be playing this game along with other games like this game. 7.30 p.m. PST on Facebook, Unfiltered Gamer. You won't miss it if you type it in correctly. As well as take a look at our friends. I more games like them. And look at our game. Really good stuff. Uh, they do tons of giveaways and stuff, even more than my own site. All right, guys. That's all I got for this time. My voice is out. And I look forward to delving the depths with you and avoiding the Kraken. Next time, unleash the Kraken!